So it's going to be a short case, basically. That's what kind of presentations these would be. So I'm going to just talk about engaging anomalous right coronary artery arising from the left coronary cusp. And it's a, it's a tough thing to engage, especially because the location might be in different places. So what it's recommended, this is a paper by Sarkar from Mount Sinai, uh, where they uh, divided the aorta with a, with a midline, as you can see here, and then divided uh, it with a one horizontal line like this from the left main. That would give you four quadrants. And the most difficult one is the one which is at A, a position. The DCB uh, can usually be engaged with GL35 or GL30, a, a smaller catheter, but a GL catheter. So this is an LAO view? It looks like AP view, but you should do it in LA, uh, LAO view what, when, when you're doing this. Okay. Yeah, okay, that was your question. So let me go over the case. Okay, good. So this patient um, is, uh, I think, a mid, uh, late mid-age patient who needed a pre tever workup with a cardiac catheterization. Um, he had multiple attempts done for engaging that RCA. So there was already a diagnosis of anomalous RCA to begin with. And they tried from the femoral artery as well as the radial artery. As you can see, we are having tough time getting the catheters across. The J wire would not go through. And it was difficult to get it down there. Uh, although we were able to get it down there by manipulating the catheter. So as you can see in the subclavian, in the innominate artery, there's a bend. And that bend can straighten up with deep inspiration or clocking the catheter. So that's what we are doing, doing and while making the wire move forward with some support. And we were able to get it down uh, with that maneuver. But the further maneuverability of the catheter is significantly affected. Now, I would caution you guys not to, to mess up this arch a lot because if it gets dissected, it's like an emergency because it can go into the carotid. It progresses. So I, um, if it doesn't straighten up significantly with the J-wire, I do not put amplads and Lunderquist wires as some people do. I've had seen that happen to one of my colleagues and I've stopped doing that uh, since then. And that's, that means uh, open right away, the surgeons need to be called and they have to take care of it. Any questions here? So this is an open discussion because you're only three or four people here. So for you to engage, uh, do you have to use a um, longer reach catheter because you have a significant portion of your length taken up by the tortuosity? It can happen in, in tall patients that you might need to use a longer length catheter. Uh, that is true. But if it straightens up, it usually is okay unless there's a lot of ectasia in the aorta. As you can see, like in AP view, the catheter is crossing to the left side of the vertebral column. And that means that it's not lazoria, but it's kind of functional lazoria, which will take away the length of the catheter. Uh, if that happens, yes. Tiger catheter usually causes this problem. Tiger, uh, the tick catheter, uh, because it's shorter, it has that issue, but these FL um, catheters, they are pretty long. They are 100 centimeters uh, or 120. Uh, so you're good with that. If you're using a pigtail catheter for LV gram, yes, you need to use a longer catheter. Good question. So we were able to get left-sided angiogram, as you can see. and pretty unremarkable. We have a swan gans in there as well to calculate the cardiac output for 
uh, evaluating invasively the valve. And the next thing that I really want to teach here is this. As you can see, it's at the position of A. Remember that A position? Now, to get a catheter there, I tried GL 3.5 and tried to push it against the, the cusp so that it points upwards. It wouldn't do that. So then the next choice that I have here is EBU, okay? So EBU would make that curve and, and as you see, you see that? I'm pushing the wire forward, the soft portion of the wire, making it go down and get stuck in the sinotubular junction. And while doing that, I'm doing counter clock, clock motion so that it can get stuck. Once it's stuck, I just have to rotate it a little bit and I saw a shadow there. You saw that shadow? Once I saw the shadow, I have a tactile feedback that I'm engaged, and there it is. Okay. There's the position, and it's like a slit. So, but the slit is so little and small, there's not really a hole where you can engage the guide. So after this, I was able to get it back again. Now you can use a GL4 here, uh, G, uh, sorry, EBU4 here as well, or a undersized GL3.0 and curl it up in the left coronicus to look it upwards as well. Okay. okay. You see, it's like a slit and it's it, in the RAO view, it's coming where? anteriorly. So that means it's an anterior takeoff and it's slit-like structure. So it's between, uh, it's intramural. Now this patient came in with syncope. That's another challenging dilemma because there's syncope and he has severe AS. Uh, although on the echo, because of the angulation of his aorta, the, uh, the, the mean gradient was in 20s. See how, how unsteady it is? Mm -hmm. So the other option to deal with this is you put a wire through it, okay? And park the wire inside. So what you call as air mailing. So in the inside, while floating in the blood with a jet of aortic stenosis shooting up, you try to get a wire in there and park it in. And then that wire gives you the support. Okay, now I'm trying to cross the, the valve and I think the wire valve was crossed and that's pretty, pretty much it. So let me go back to the presentation. So these are series of different cases with patients at Mount Sinai where they had different type of takeoffs, as we said, A, C, D, all that stuff. So A is the more difficult one, right? So they, they used 250 ml of contrast, took a 40 minute time to actually engage the coronary ostium. Now, remember the JL, which is Judkins left, and that's the word we use all the time, but FL is the one that is most commonly used. FL has a little bit more of a hook, and that's a better version of a catheter to use in these cases. Not the JL. Uh, you come to the C. Well, D is the easiest, easiest one. You can use just the JR4 uh, for this. So all of them use JR4 in the beginning. And then they convert it to either AL2 or AL3. That would be the option. The other option would be uh, undersized FL, FL3 here, FL3 or FCL. FCL is pretty similar to FL. VL is also, VL is WADA uh, left. Uh, we don't have that available, but that's also another option to use. But I, if even if you don't have it, you can use FL3. So is FL and JL separate in our lab? We, I don't know if we have JL, we have FL. JL is, we don't have it. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I mean, just just a small presentation. Just uh, I'm going to make this a case series for the future fellows, so they can always access this and um, uh, use it afterwards.